Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like a trapper dog, giving them all. Like a million bucks, but things in this cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands Everybody, you are listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Why? Because God, God is in the blessing business. If you go get in line, He has something for you. God is amazing. The plan He actually has for you is so far greater than you can possibly imagine. It's really mind blowing. And as I look back on where he's brought me from and what he's currently doing for me, all I can do is tell you is God. That's all I can tell you because I tell you right now, I didn't foresee it. You know, it, it oftentimes amazes me when I listen to celebrities when they interview, how they say, you know, I always, always thought I, that this would happen for me. And I just, you know, I, it could be true. But for me, it's not that way at all. I didn't imagine it this way. I had a dream of becoming famous one day, but I had no idea it would, it would ever get to this. It was a very, very simple, uh, desire for fame. There is no way I could have seen all this. There is no way I am telling you. This is, this has been nothing for me, but the grace of God. And all the times I failed, every time I had fallen, he picked me up, he dusted me off, and he kept me moving. It has been an amazing thing to watch God do what he do. As I look back on my history, and you sometimes look back on your history, you've got to see, man, wow, what God has done for you and what he's brought you through to enable you to be where you are. It is amazing. Because really, I mean, really, real talk now, had he allowed all of the decisions I had made to play all the way out, I can assure you I wouldn't be here today. But God, through this grace and mercy, who had a plan for me, who was just waiting on me to come get in line, and then he was going to start emptying out. He was going to start shipping out all the boxes in heaven with my name on it. And man, what a great God he is. What a great God he is. And you have boxes of blessings with your name on it that he is waiting to ship, but he needs you to go down there and get in line. That's what it is. 
It is not that he has more boxes for other people than he do you. He got boxes with your name on it who have never been shipped because you will not get in line to go get them. You will not ask God for them. You will not do the things necessary to attain them. We stop our own blessings, man. I have been the biggest stopper of my blessings than anybody else. I can't really get mad at nobody. I got nobody to blame for my existence but me. But then at the same time, I can't take credit for this. I really, really can't. I I kid you not. I cannot take credit for it. And if you ever see me taking credit for it, tap me on the shoulder, say, Steve, pull up. Remember you said this ain't about you. If you catch me taking too much credit, you have my permission to stop me. Now, here is the deal, though. And and this is what I want to get through to you today. Moving forward while under attack, new level, new devil. You know, every time you go somewhere, every time you try to progress, every time you make a decision to be better, to do better, there's going to be a confrontation you're going to have because it is the enemy's job to not see you go forward, do better, want more, behave yourself. There is a force that is operative out there that has people working on his behalf 24-7. You got a computer? Go go read a blog. Just go read a blog. They busy, man. Not knowing, but just saying evil stuff constantly. Con- that's their job. Well, here's here's what happens. I, you, we have to always keep moving forward while we're under attack. Because the attack is going to always come. If you allow the attackers to stop you, you will lose that particular battle. And you cannot afford this. You know, my father used to say, uh, be careful when you're trying to kick somebody off the ladder because you got to take your foot off too. And you might slip. And so when people are taking their feet off the ladder, most, some of them, may, most, the majority of them ain't even up on a ladder. They just at the bottom throwing stuff up at you. They are just shaking your ladder. They ain't even they ain't even on your level, really, tell you the truth. They're really not. You have moved on far beyond them, spiritually, physically, everything. But they are still shaking your ladder and attacking you. Keep moving forward while under attack because the attacks are going to come. If you take the time to stop and address it, you are impeding your own progress. This is very important to understand. Go on about your business and remember Steve Harvey and remember those of you out there. There is a Bible verse that helps me out every time. And I don't know why I got it on six different plaques sitting all around my offices. Everywhere I go, I can read it. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That because this is that he will put me under his wings of protection. And this is my inheritance as a servant of the Lord, period. I'm his boy. He my man. So, so dig. So, so when you come in for me, I have to just rest on that law right there that he got it, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm just like you sometimes, you know, we know better, but sometimes we don't do better, man. Let them say what they going to say when they get through saying it. When they get through writing it, when they get through talking about you, when they get through lying about you, guess what they're going to have to do? They're going to have to step back and watch you rise. They're going to have to kick back and watch what God got for you. Because nothing God got for you can't nobody stop it. I don't care what they do. Keep moving forward while under attack. You know something? I'll tell you something, man. Minister Louis Farrakhan taught me something very important one day. He said, Steve, remember this. He said, it is a common thing for a dog to bark up at the moon. But if the moon barks back at the dog, the dog becomes famous. You feel me? The moon was talking to you? What did you, how did the moon stop and talk to you? Don't give them that. Let the dog bark up at the moon. Don't you be up there. You go where God got you going. Don't bark back at this dog because the dog come famous because they ain't going to be able to get to you, but the dog is famous. Now they want to interview the dog. Now the dog, guess what? He going to do more barking. Guess what? About you.
Man, go on about your business, y'all. God is in the blessing business all day long, man. Go get in line. Get you some. Get them packages and boxes shipped to you. They got your name on it. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, let me have your undivided attention. This is the voice of Steve Harvey. It's a little bit different today. I've decided to use my radio voice today. How long I'll be using this voice, I'm not really, really sure. It's rather dry and boring to me, but I'll attempt to use it. Sure. Strawberry has the best voice in all of radio. I will never be accused of that. I have been called country, heels worthy. Most recently, I found out I was a country bumpkin. Well... Let me say this. The country bumpkin done made it. <laughs> you better wish you was this country. <laughs> Use what you got. I heard a preacher on uh, Instagram talking about all the people in the Bible that God had used that was flawed. Murderers, adulterers, thieves, all. Prostitutes, uh, womanizers, uh, haters, thieves, cowards. Uh, he used a lot of different people. I just figured, you know, Country Bumpkin could be one of them too. So here I am. Hey, man. You put that together, did you? Letting him use me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I laugh at people now, man. Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi, Monica Jr., and the legend that is Nephew Tommy. Hey, man, I am so happy that I have discovered the the new version of me. I've been working on it for quite some while, for uh, quite some time. God has removed me from a lot of people and put me off in a corner somewhere and put me on timeout so he could talk to me. And he figured out the best way to talk to me was to remove distraction and set me over there by myself. So I've been alone for a little while now and man oh man oh man has he been talking to me and I've been listening and man oh man oh man I'm I'm even more solid than I ever been thank you Lord I ain't know what you was doing at first but I got it now <laughs> huh Junior yeah, yeah uh, mm. you know uh, man, look, what? you know the, the country bumpkin got a mentoring camp going on right now the country bumpkin do and did you ever uh, foresee with yourself? With my hillbilly self. Yeah, with your hillbilly self. Did you ever foresee yourself um, being this type of mentor? Did you ever foresee this part? Did you ever see that? Hell no, I needed a mentor. <laughs> I thank God for my father, man, because this dude was the best mentor I ever had. Now, his methods I've had to adjust. <laughs> Because his methods didn't really work on my sons, and they sure ain't going to work at this camp. But they were very effective for me in the time that I grew up as a young young boy growing up in the 60s. So I needed that toughness yeah. that he gave me. But um, I think I think most of us never know where we're going to end up. You know, it kills me when people say that. I always knew I'd be here. Well, really? Right. Oh, really? Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Very few of us know exactly where we'll wind up, but when you get there, you're awful grateful that you are, and that's why I am right now. You know, I was like Beyonce knew at 14. Matthew Knowles was bringing her to the hip hop comedy stop down in Houston. She was 14 years old. She'd go up on amateur night, her and the girls. Yep. And he knew. He said, "Man, my daughter gonna be a star." I said, "Oh, cool. Well, I got these jokes to tell, so can you get the kids?" About me? <laughs> All right, Steve. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Imagine hearing the devastating words, "Your child has cancer." Now, imagine receiving the best treatment for your child without ever receiving a bill. That's the mission of St. Jude, finding cures, saving children. You can help St. Jude continue its mission by donating today. Your gift helps St. Jude get one step closer to a cure. You can donate right now from your cell phone. All you have to do is text SHMS, that's for Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's SHMS to 785 833. So here's how you donate again. You type in 785 833 on your phone, and in the message section, type in 
SHMS for Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your monthly gift of just $19 brings St. Jude closer to its mission of finding cures and saving children. Come on, What's Steve Harvey again? Nation. We need you now. Let's give and let's give big for the children of St. Jude. What's the number again? Text SHMS to 785833. That's all you have to do. Five eight three three. And near what what that'll do? It'll help the children. That means that you're going to give just nineteen dollars to St. Jude to help save the children. You're you're going to receive it's a T-shirt nice. after you do that. Is that one that. time, or they're going to come back to me again? Just one time. Well, I need for everybody to know so people yeah. can understand what mm-hmm. they're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so it. Just one, one time. Is, I'm going text to seven eight five eight three three. Yes, and then that's text it. In S H M S. Uh huh. Mm hmm. That means and that's us. Gonna, that's going to take nineteen dollars. Where are they going to get it from? Your banking it's information. It's going to link you to everything. Yeah, you're gonna. You'll you'll see. Oh, okay. Just do that first. Yeah. They know awesome. we're gonna have to do it. Thank you yeah. for your support to complete your donation. Click here. Yeah. All right now. Can I just right. click the side button like when I pay for stuff on? Because you know I'm Amazon Prime now. <laughs> I just want <laughs> All right. And when, when you we do that, Steve, when you we'll do that. We'll be working on this because I'm saving lives with $19. That's, That's all you right. have to do. Tell me. I can That's save right. my life with $19. I have to do that. Yes. Yes. $19. All right. So uh, we're going to switch gears here. We'll be talking about St. Jude all morning and uh, how you can donate and all of that. So thank you for your donations. It is time now to switch gears uh, and go to the nephew for the prank. What you got for his Neff? Relationship departure. Relationship <laughs> departure. It's gonna be rough. Let's go, Keto. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Brian. Hey, baby. Yeah, what's up? I was um, I was calling to tell you, <sighs> baby. Look, I just I, I just can't do I this anymore. I got it. I got it. Huh? What? What? Hello. Oh, uh, hello. Brian. Hey, uh, Brian. Hey, this is Greg. I know you. I know you was just talking to Val, but this is this is Greg talking to you. It's Brian. Right? Greg, who? Greg, who? Yeah, this is Brian. Greg, I was just talking to my wife. Uh, did you put her back on the phone? Uh, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to do that. So, why, hey, why can't you do that, man? Hey, let me explain something to you. Uh, explain. All right, there's some things you know. Long conversations about this. Whoa, whoa, whoa! How you know my wife on a first name basis like that, man? How you? Who are you? Like I said, man, my name is Greg. Uh, okay. All right, at the airport. Okay. At what, airport? Which airport? And why is you, what, what are you at the airport with my wife for? Hey, let me... What, what, hey, what, hey, 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 Doc. All of this is complicated, okay? It's real... Yeah, it is. Yeah, make it simple for me. Okay. So, what I want to explain to you... What I, let me explain to you, man. Nine, we've had a lot of long conversations about this. It's something that she... What? When? When was this? Why, why are you at the airport with my wife? With me. And why? Is leaving with me. Okay? What? what, what leaving? And y'all, what do you mean leaving? Leaving me? Oh, hell no. Put her on the phone. Hey, I don't even want to talk to you, man. Put her on the phone. Put her on the phone, man. Look, you need to put her on the phone right now. Leaving. I don't believe that, man. I want to hear her say that. You want to talk to him? I don't hear you, Stan. Yeah, yeah, let me talk to my wife, man, because you, 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 baby, you about to make good baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what's up? What's this dude talking calm about? Calm down, sweetie. Calm, 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 calm down. I've been trying that, to tell you this for a while. See, you think everything's okay, but it hasn't been okay. Why are you telling me this over the phone? Why can't you just come home and I tell me this to my face, baby? Go, go, go sit down. Why can't you just tell me this to my face? Hey, 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 bro. Come on, man. No, man. Why are you? Oh, man, I'm just talking to my wife, man. Hey, 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 bro, I, 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 I know this is painful, man. Know. No, you don't know, all right? You don't know nothing, hey, brother, right? I know this is... Know nothing. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe it. I just put my wife on the phone, please. Please, if you, if you got any ounce of a man in you, just put my wife back on the phone. All right, I, 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 all right, bro. Let me, let me, let me say. Let me, let me can I say something to you, man? What you got to say, man? What you? Is, 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 is my wife on the phone, but you ain't got nothing I, to I'm tell a, me. I'm gonna put her on in a second, but let me say this to you, man. Okay, say it, say it, man, and wrap it up, all right? Because I need to talk to my wife. 
I just want you to know this, Brian. This is Let me know something. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Tommy you got me to prank phone call you. you what you mean? Hold on. So, so okay, if you prank me, what's up with the airport and stuff in the back then? Y'all at the airport? No, nah, bro. Your oh. wife is here at the studio, man. Ain't nothing happening, man. Uh, Your wife. Hold on, I'm gonna let you talk man. to him. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you all right? First of oh, all, are you all right? Man, uh. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, it was about to be a murder scene, man. Mm -hmm. Look at me. Uh, now, now who's the big prankster, huh? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Finally. You could have been a little bit more Ooh, subtle so than this. I mean, <laughs> you, and your, you and your brother, you think y'all the only ones can prank people. He's like, you and your brother be oh. pranking all the time, man. Boy, man, it's, it's light stuff, though. I am, girl, <laughs> you ain't. Oh, Lord, geez, and happy birthday, got, baby. Man. Oh, you got a birthday oh, coming up? Happy birthday, Brian. This, this, yeah, man. We're a great gift. Great <laughs> gift, man. Let me talk to my wife, man. All right, yeah, I, 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 got, I ain't got nothing to do with your wife. Hold on. Please. The, what? You, woman, you huh? got me, all right? Don't, don't. You ain't got to go this far, all right? You ain't got to go this far every time. It's supposed to be funny. I did feel a little bad when you kind of started tearing up, but I'm glad to know you fight for me like that. Uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> Fight. It was gonna be some fight. It wasn't gonna be a fight. Oh, girl, just a hey, bring your black home. I'm coming, baby. Don't I'm even coming. stop at red light. You can take don't stop track. at red light. Oh, why? <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Gladys Knight, Charlie Wilson, Patti LaBelle, all of them performed at the White House Juneteenth celebration. And, and this was such a cute moment. Did you see Kirk Franklin and Vice President Kamala Harris with their viral dance moment? Yes. Uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Plus, in sports entertainment news, uh, Angel Reese is ranked number one now in the latest CBS Sports WNBA rookie rankings. And Oprah Winfrey is back home after receiving, after uh, recovering from a stomach virus. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. All right, this is from Charlie in Tarzana. Charlie writes, I'm a 41-year-old single woman. I met a guy and we were discussing people we knew in common. He is an old friend of my ex-boyfriend, but they haven't talked in years. Should I tell him that his friend is my ex-boyfriend or should I keep it to myself? Hmm. That's a well, CLO. that's a tough one. Well, first of all, if you haven't met him and you just heard them talking as friends, you could always say, I didn't know you were referring to him. We dated a long time ago. Then you bring it up. I wouldn't go in there and volunteer that. <laughs> we know you would. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Don't start a campfire in your living room. Uh, okay. Oh, that's okay, that's profound. That's a new one. Uh -huh. That's a new one. Yeah, you've heard that one. Go ahead now. That don't make no damn sense, though. Say it one more time. Do not start a campfire in your own living room. Okay. Own All right. Living room. All right. Okay. Don't create problems where there oh, are no. Okay, okay got gotcha. Campfire. <laughs> that means going to burn the whole house down. <laughs> Bro, who doing yeah, that? Who once do you that? start. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's a campfire. Who are you in the, in the living room? You done went in there and possibly burned down the whole house for no reason. All you got to do is shut your damn mouth. Just yeah. shut up. All right. Be quiet. All right. Don't create a problem that ain't one. Move, right. Moving on to Marie and Jasper. Marie says, I'm married to a man that is hard to please. He's always commenting on my hair and my choice of clothes. I have stopped trying to please him and please myself. Should I start to critique him so he can see how it feels? How do I get him to stop? She doesn't say what she's well, wearing. Well, the tip for tat don't normally hair. work. Huh? I don't I don't think the tip for tat usually works. Mm -hmm. That yeah. you do me, I do you. Mm -hmm. I think it's better to resolve it by sitting down and going, hey, listen, you know, I don't know if you noticed this, but you're constantly very, very critical of me. And I, and I don't like it. And I want you to stop being critical of me. If you don't like my hair, if you don't like my outfits, then we have another problem. 
Because there are things that I do not like about you, but I spare your feelings. And then just say, you know, like, you know, you small to me, but I don't say nothing. Uh, you can just, so hey, just, just drop a little one. Hey, that's just drop a crushing a blow. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you got to crush his ass. Just yeah, drop a little a one crush. out there. <laughs> yeah, just go and just keep talking like you ain't saying. <laughs> like, like, I like what? That. I like that. Just keep talking like you ain't saying. Go stop the critique. Is what yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just okay. So that pettiness is does, the tax. pettiness is there. Okay, <laughs> cool. Okay, cool. That is. Yes. Yes. All right. Moving on to Joanne in Queens. Joanne writes, I'm turning 67 in August, and I've never had a birthday party, so I'm planning one for myself. My boyfriend is not supportive. Because it's not a milestone birthday. Should I plan a girl's getaway and exclude my boyfriend from the celebration? What? Yeah. 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 I would. Yeah. Exclude yeah. him, period. What the heck? I mean, he don't want to go. Just take your girls. Go go do you a birthday. Who ain't had a birthday? He doesn't want to support her on her birthday, period. Man. Yeah. Every birthday over Every 60 birthday. is a milestone. Yeah. Get out yeah. of here. What are you what talking ask about? <laughs> yeah. Man. Please. Man. <laughs> He's not supportive of her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't Steve. require parties, mm -hmm. but I do require a dinner. <laughs> yeah, yes. Something, some kind of acknowledgement. And some type of band. And a gift. Some, <laughs> yeah. Plus a and gift. something <laughs> naked. Got you. I'm sorry. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was just uh, Tommy's random thought. Too early. You. Too early. I'm sorry. Hey, 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 I make mistakes. I'm sorry. Right. Right. But daily no dog. You don't want to be naked daily? I don't understand you. But that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. I don't understand. There have been days in my life I haven't been naked. That's because you don't days. be bathing. And we got, but that's a whole other story with you. I don't even want to go into that part. Well, you know. I know you're going to say you bathed every day. You're going to act like you ain't ever missed a day, but I know better than that. So mm. let's just go. You know, some of us tell the truth sometimes, and some of us lie all the time. <laughs> all the time. Tommy be lying all you the know, time. You know, like, so you know, but listen lying. to me. Like, he ain't never missed a day, baby. Uh-huh. I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have. Oh, okay. okay. You admit it. I don't okay. want to think about it, but I'm sure I have. Because oh. normally he said he takes three shots. Three a day. Yeah. So now we're down to zero. So you hey, who do that? Who the hell got time? <laughs> To He's take so three clean. damn showers a day. Shower. That ain't man. Stop. <laughs> so what? What have you done between the time you took the last? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> what did you do? Are you a sewer worker? What are you? <laughs> what you doing? Oh, I'm uh, right. down here working on the sewage line today. I'm going to get on out of here, take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Steve, let's move to this very last so one. so crazy. This, I know. This is from Ty in Roanoke. Ty says, um, if my wife is upset with me, she can't hide it. She rolls her eyes, pouts, and won't talk to people. I have to walk around on eggshells and include her in every conversation when we're out so she won't feel slighted. What is the best way to deal with her? Wow. That's hard, man. I've been in that before. <sighs> First How thing I tell you, this? quit going out places with her. Stay home. <laughs> Uh, they can't go outside. Yeah. See, what you're not going to do is take me outside and embarrass me. You're just going <laughs> to have these rough moments at the house. But we're not going to share this experience with the public. <laughs> no, I don't I don't like that, man. No, I ain't taking you nowhere. You, once you show out on me, out in public, now I got, and that walking around on eggshells, don't nobody want to be in a relationship with that. I've been in that, man. It's uncomfortable. But what did he do? Always on eggshells. Huh? She was, she's upset. That's why she's doing it. Not that it's right, but she's upset with him. That's why she's doing it. No, she always upset. <laughs> Every, because it has to be about her. And the moment it ain't about her, that's upsetting to her. Well, who won't that? Uh, all right. Hmm. Well, what did he do? <laughs> Coming up at the top of the hour. Thank you, Steve. You ain't got to do. You don't really have to do nothing to crazy people. We'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Gladys Knight, Patti LaBelle, 
Uncle Charlie Wilson, Anthony Hamilton, Doug E. Fresh, and Kirk Franklin all performed at the White House for their Juneteenth celebration. And did you guys see Kirk Franklin dancing with Vice President Kamala Harris? <laughs> he was, they yes. were singing I Smile. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and Kirk went and grabbed the VP and uh, had a little viral dance moment. It was really, really cute. Uh, mm-hmm. Vice President Harris was a little hesitant at first, but Madam Vice President joined Kirk on stage, and it was a cute uh, viral dance moment. Her Dougie dance Fresh also everything. danced with Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Um, it, it was a really, you know, nice celebration. Um, President Biden told the crowd, quote, black history is American history. The president also warned, and that's true. That is true. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> sir, Mr. True. President. Yes. yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> the president also warned that some, quote, old ghosts and new clothes, a veiled reference to some of his Republican rivals, seek to take away their freedoms by making it harder for black Americans to vote. And we do know that. <laughs> hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's so. Uh, and that message is for all the blacks for Trump. Oh, show you how much he care about you. He don't really care about your vote unless it's to get him in. Yeah. And also, I would like to say, remember a week ago, I sent out a challenge to anybody could email me or uh-huh. call in who was a black that was in support of Trump. If you yeah. could call in, I would seriously play your phone call or your email. And I'm uh, still waiting. All right. Still waiting on the phone calls or to blacks for Trump. So you can share with me what Trump has done for blacks. And if you could inform me of what it is that he's done for blacks so I can see your position for saying that you are a black for Trump. I will play your phone call in its entirety and I will let you state your case. And uh, but I'm still waiting on those phone calls. and emails. <laughs> We did get one call, Steve, and the lady, her call of the audio had dropped. But hopefully she'll call back because she did say. He ain't done a damn thing. And then she hung up. <laughs> so, <laughs> Trump well, said he's done more for blacks than Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, that's a, oh, oh, God. That's a, oh, God. Well, well, All Washington right. State. All right. Moving on uh, to other entertainment news. Oprah Winfrey is on the mend after she had a stomach virus uh, and that sent her to the emergency room. A spokesman for Oprah said Miss Winfrey is recovering from the virus. Oprah's best friend, Gail, uh, posted a video to her Instagram where Oprah said uh, she couldn't keep enough water down to keep hydrated, which made her seek treatment at the hospital. Oprah also noted that multiple people in her household caught the bug and warned people to remember to wash their hands. You have to wash your hands. All right. That's mm. what Oprah said. And glad yeah. she's on the men for sure. Yeah. People on social media was trying to say it was because of the weight loss. Medication that she was taking. Oh, they don't say and, whatever. Yeah, they yeah. just boy. Yeah, they they always want to link that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, in sports entertainment news, the CBS Sports WNBA rookie rankings were released, and the Chicago Sky's Angel Reese is ranked number one, and Indiana Fever's Caitlin Clark is ranked number two. CBS oh. Sports explained, yeah, Angel Reese's consistency and ability to contribute on both ends of the court are some of the most impressive parts of her game. Meanwhile, for Caitlin Clark, uh, CBS noted that while she continues to put up big numbers, her up and down performances have really affected her status. So there you go. Um, hmm. Number one and number two well, now. Well, you can't Angel say Reese the both Caitlin of those Clark. together. She continues to put up big numbers, but her up and down performance, because there's games where she's not in double digits. Listen, it's an adjustment period for all these women get coming to the man. WNBA. They do not know how good those women are. When you play college female sports in Iowa, you have not seen what you are going to see in the WNBA. Mm-hmm. I don't care what college you play in. You're not going to see what you see in the WNBA. Them them grown women out there, and they play ball for real. They physical, and they tough, and they competitive. And Caitlin Clark is going to be outstanding, but she is going to have to adjust to the speed and physicality because everybody out there good. And she got to, yeah. she just been the best she everywhere was. she went. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not going to be the best out here. Right. Mm-hmm. They're not going to let you. It's an adjustment. It's an adjustment. Yeah. But I'm happy to hear that Angel Reese 
is ranked number one. I love that. Well, CBS she Sports. she putting up more consistent numbers mm-hmm. as a rookie. That's my girl. She's had Go a couple like double Reese. doubles and all of this here. That mm-hmm. girl balling, man. And her yes, outfits before the game, clap, clap. <laughs> yeah, she she lies. Girl. Lie. Yeah, she Come through, cool. young girl. Yeah, she's beautiful. <laughs> happy for her. Happy for Angel. Some Reed. of the WNBA fashions is pretty fly, man. They come to the Ooh, game they looking are. fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they say viewership is up, too. The numbers are up. People are watching the game. Well, I know I'm watching more. I'm watching the games, too. So it's all good. It's cool. Shirley, you've been watching? Uh, that would be a no. <laughs> I, I do watch the highlights, though. <laughs> Just, I've been watching the games. It's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I, I do like their outfits. I like their fashions. I like all of that. Well, what we say about the men's outfit, Uncle? What would you say about the men's outfit when they come into the game? In the tunnel. <laughs> oh, yeah, when they come through the tunnel. Well, a lot of them boys be fly, man. They got mad at Jason Tatum's outfit the other night when he was playing at home. He had on that tan suit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that tan suit was dope, man. He was clean. He yeah. was clean. It's a lot of people just be hating on him, cats. But Jason Tatum was clean, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, you like that it? boy you was like his dressed. Oh, no, okay. they, they was eating him up about that outfit. Mm. That thing was dope. That boy was fly, man. <laughs> Blue <laughs> cheese now, said. Now Westbrook, I love Westbrook, who was my favorite NBA player. But Westbrook, you know, you put them kilts on and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So, Junior, you and I toured St. Jude last month. We met two very special little girls that are receiving treatment at St. Jude. Uh, We met their fathers. We heard their stories. And what stood out most to me is the amount of support that St. Jude offers families of its patients. They provide transportation, housing, meals, and other resources for the parents of the St. Jude patient, all free of charge. They don't charge anything to the families. Families never receive a bill for treatment or any other assistance. What is these received. two kids y'all met? Well, oh, I met a, a beautiful little girl, Steve. You would have loved her. Her name was Yara. We sat down and painted together. And uh, just a sweet, spirited little girl. Her, she and her dad were there. We all painted together. But she was the flyest little girl you ever want to see. She had on the cutest really? little outfit. It was black mm. with bell bottoms. And I, I mean, she was just, they paired me with the perfect little girl. They really, really <laughs> did. <Yeah. laughs> and Kier, you said your girl was yeah. so bossy. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a young lady. She was, she, was, she was nice, but, you know, we had to paint and everything. And uh-huh. uh, she was from the Dominican uh, Dominican Republic. She was from mm. no, she's from South America, and she mm. had uh, eye cancer. But we were painting, right? And uh, she told me to paint the picture, right? And uh-huh. told me where I needed to paint. <laughs> but every time I had to go pick a color, she told me no. Now she didn't speak no English, so her daddy was interpreting everything. So the whole time I'm sitting here, and she said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh." She said, "Uh, Roja." So I went and got the green. She said, "No, Roja is red." I don't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Well, look here. Everybody's going to the hospital, but listen, man. If you make a donation on this number that I'm about to give you, Mm -hmm. you can help save a life. $19 saves a child's life. You're going to get a shirt for it and everything. So I just did it. And let me tell you how simple it is. All you got to do is text. Go to the block where it say two. And then text in 785-833. You look, see, you, that thing that say to, T-O, to. You go type in 785-833. 785-833. Then go down to the message block where it say what you want to type the message. And then just type in SHMS. That stands for Steve Harvey Morning Show. Then press send. Then they going to send you a link. Mm -hmm. And then you press that link. Uh And guess what it do? It make it real simple. You can give $19 one time. You can give it a month. You can give $25 one time. You can make it monthly. You got a block where you can give $50 one time. Or you, you can make it monthly. Or they got a block below that where you can type in. Look, if you only got $5. If you only got four dollars, if you got three dollars, whatever you do, type that in, and then and you can pay on Apple Pay, 
which is fascinating to me because I just got that yesterday. <laughs> I just got funny. Apple Pay yesterday. My bank shut my whole account down when they found out I tried to transfer some money over there. They went, who is this, <laughs> sir? But this is what this is about. Text that number mm-hmm. in the block that say to a T-O. Seven eight five eight three three. Then go down there where you type a message to somebody and just type in S H M S Steve Harvey Morning Show and hit that link and Gil and you can save somebody's life. That's, That's what right. this is about. Now, That's period. right. Steve. Get on that. Act like you care. <laughs> Seven <laughs> eight five eight three three. Now coming up at thirty four minutes after, we'll talk about Father's Day gifts he'll actually use right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So we all know that this Sunday is Father's Day. This mm. Sunday is Father's Day, guys. Mm. And um, mm. yeah, let's go. Yeah, get excited. Yeah, this yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, woo, woo. <laughs> it ain't, it's well, all jokes about it. I'm tired of <laughs> Well, the other day, remember, we talked about the fun Father's Day activities that you guys can do. And now we found a list online with Father's Day gifts that dad will actually use, okay? So Steve, Tommy, and Junior, see if you like these suggestions because you weren't too keen on the last ones, okay? They have something called a travel adapter. Now what the travel adapter does for dad or the man in your life, especially if he likes to travel this you know, internationally, this... Mm, if you have a travel adapter that can help you, that's what a the travel, travel adapter. adapter that does what, Shirley? I don't well, understand. Well, well the travel adapter it helps you adapt to the place you're in. Okay, you know how no, you no, go. No, you no, may no, not no. know the it's, the it's currency, just... or you may not know where to stay or where to go. But it helps Shirley, you adapt to all. What that. are you talking about? No, well, no, no. An adapter ta- goes into the wall. Oh. It's a charger. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a charger, girl. I'm sitting up here going. What? It tells you what the Girl currency there. is. So, Shirley, you well, thinking of a converter? I thought it converter. made you adapt to the to the place you're in. Okay. No, oh, no I an really adapter did. goes into the wall into and the has wall. different yeah. uh, plugs and stuff. Yeah, well, that's I'm a good going, gift for a it father. It tells you right? like where to eat and where to what. You think about an app it helps you adapt to the space, <laughs> to the you place, Shirley. <laughs> Don't nobody want that ragged ass. Hey, with this kind of, I think that's a great Father's Day gift. <laughs> with this kind of confusion, what do you think happened on Father's Day? With this kind of confusion, this right here. <laughs> this right here. See, that, and that's another that's Father's point. Day that's, gift. Where that's you, y'all's point. Yeah, where you get it and you don't even know what it no, is. And the person that gives it to you don't even know what it is. Look, the I'm just trying to help. help. I'm the messenger yeah. here. You ain't trying uh, how to help. About you, this? you just proved a point. What's the next ragged ass gift? How about this? <laughs> How about this? A cooler on wheels. Oh, that's you know, like somebody dragging cool- no damn cooler on wheels so y'all cooler. can have cold drinks down at the beach? You know how hard it is to drag a cooler through the sand on the damn beach? But if it has that on like wheels, anything. Now All we right, got to pick it this? up and carry it. That's, man, no, nah, hell All right. no. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. You might like this one. Come it's on, a massage gun. A massage gun, okay? You know, like if you wow. work out and your muscles Boy, are sore and all that. Boy, I put that thing on high one time and damn near blew the back of my neck off. <laughs> but there was a... Uh, I went, I... Uh, yeah, you that was in the, That was in the swag one. bag. That was <laughs> in the swag seven. bag at, at Steve's tournament. Oh, huh? okay, you got it as a gift. Yeah. See? Yeah. That's See a gift there? you'll yeah. So that's something use. you like. Yeah. You don't like, okay. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, just use it on your leg. Don't put it up there by your mouth. <laughs> so right now you knock your damn teeth. <laughs> okay, so that one, that one you might I'm like. Don't that right. doing your neck and it slip uh-huh. up and it shatter all your teeth. <laughs> Do this on your legs. Steve, this one is Another for you. Another dangerous ass gift. <laughs> this, one, this one is for you, okay? You like to be outside. This is a camp chair. You can get your dad a camp chair or one of those lo- uh, long lounge chairs with a portable cup holder. Yes, that's good. That's convenient. That's like a great gift. So we got to so we got to drag the cooler and we got to drag the chair. lounge chair. Camp chair. You Happy mean a fold away chair? Yeah, with the cup holder. All in this out and down to the family, you finna get me a ragged ass fold away chair with a portable cup holder. All of them got cup holders on it. You said you don't want to tie my or socks. 
Girl, I'm at my ranch right now for these kids. I can go outside and show you 13 of these damn kids. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but so, you right. use it. That's the list. Gifts okay, you actually right. use. One more. Well, one off, more. One put more, all four Steve. of them gifts together, dog. <laughs> one more. A, ch- a cordless chainsaw. How about that what? one? A cordless no, chainsaw. Another uh, dangerous no. ass gift. All your gifts can kill your dad. <laughs> a cordless chainsaw. Who the hell got a chainsaw a with a cord work. on it? How are you out in the woods with a chainsaw with a damn cord on them? All cordless. of them is cordless. It's Shirley. cordless. It's cordless. Girl, all chainsaws is cordless. Who the hell? <laughs> you don't like the list? No. Y'all don't like these gifts? Why don't they cancel Father's Day like I no. quit playing with us. Coming up next, it is a prank phone call from one of our dads that we love on this show, Nephew Tommy, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, his family never has any money. We'll get into that. (laughs) That's pretty self-explanatory, right? We'll get into it in just a few, because right now the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. But Steve... you wanted to say something before we got to the prank? Do we have time? Yeah, you know what? I was talking about these gifts on the last episode where you oh, were doing Father's all these Day. fabulous new Father's Day gifts. Well, I don't know if you all noticed, but all the gifts. See, what you can't do on Mother's Day, you can't give her Mother's Day a wash and dry. Or no. no. You can't appliances. give her a damn microwave. I wish you no, would. No, you have to appliance. give her a personalized Personal. gift. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Why was all y'all's gifts to help. Now we got a cordless chainsaw. Yes. Yeah, now if we you are here. Actually do actually use. Won't you use it? Doc? No, no. Use for what? Some damn yard work. Yeah, the yard. Yeah, exactly. The complete then yard. you got this lawn chair. Yeah, we're going to need the lawn chair after we get tired from doing all the damn With a yard cup holder. Work. Well, yeah, you can. Don't forget the cooler that the cooler. Now. Don't Hell, forget oh. That. Yeah, the cooler. What hell? We thirsty? <laughs> well, you got to What the cooler is to... The cooler with the wheels on it is to drag all the sodas out on the beach for your damn family. <laughs> oh, well, what's wrong with that? Uh, I, I don't get it. You, you said you didn't want well, a shirt, uh, a tie. Don't you you just go down there and buy underwear. your own damn pop at the beach. Why we got to drag all this po mess down here with us? You said and you, you got didn't the want massage. You got the massage hammer. Don't personal. forget about that now. Huh? What's yeah, wrong with the massage, massage after your workout, post recovery? Yeah. Use your massage gun on your muscles. What's that? That's a you gift ever tried you will using use. that by yourself. And I tell you what, that a kid you can't you do nothing but the front of your leg. I'm <laughs> Why? You right now, don't Why? Put that thing up there by your neck. And oh, don't you put that thing that. up there by your neck. I done done that. It slip off and knock all your damn teeth out. I'm just telling you what I know. <laughs> and and thank, you, thank you guys for schooling me on the travel adapter because I, I had a yeah. whole different idea oh. of what that was. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's it's not an app. It's for the dad who travels internationally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are all great convenient I, yeah. gifts that you would use Father's Day. They don't my son underwear. told me. My son told me fathers get to eat free on on Sunday at Chick Fil A. I almost knocked him out the room. Damn <laughs> well, Chick Fil A closed on Sunday, boy. Get your ass. He knows. <laughs> All right, Dallas Fort Worth the nephew is coming to the majestic that Saturday night. Tickets on sale right now. Father's Day weekend. Come be a father with me. We can do this together. Okay. All right, nephew time is house party comedy jam. This right here is. Guess who's moving next door? Guess who's moving next door? Cat dog, if you would. Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Mr. Is it Dolphin? Dolan? Dolan, Dolan. Mr. Dolan? Yes, sir. How you doing? My name is uh, 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 Clifford. Clifford. Yeah, what can I do for you, Mr. Uh, you, you, you live at uh, uh, Cheshire Drive? Why do you want to know that? Uh, well, actually, I, I, I'm, I'm at 1623. I bought, I bought the, uh, I, I actually bought the house that was for sale next door to you. Oh, okay. Well, well congratulations. But how did you get my number? Uh, 
Uh, well, actually, the realtor told me that he, he had your number because I said I wanted to reach out to the neighbors next door, and he, and he told me that Mr. Dolan was actually the person next door, and and uh, he didn't think you would mind me, me actually getting the number. Okay, well, I'll, I'll talk with the realtor uh, later, but what can I do for you, sir? Well, well what, I, what I wanted to know is, do, do you have any problems like living next door to, 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 to black people? I'm sorry, what did you just ask me? I, I mean, like, like I, you know, like I said, I just bought the place next door, and I, I want to know, do you have any problems, you know, living next door to black people? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I have no problem. I, I'm assuming you're a black man, and uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, I judge people by their actions, not their color. Okay. Now, do you do you do you have any any black people experience? Well, yeah, I've worked with, gone to school with, have several friends of many different ethnicities. Uh, what, what is what, what's this? How is this relative? Well, you know, like I say, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be living next to you, and I, I'm just making sure that you know you and I can coincide or coexist with, uh, on on the same block and not really have a problem with one another. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. Well, do you have a problem with white people? Uh, no, no, no. I don't have a problem with white people. I, uh, I I'm cool. I'm just I'm just trying to make sure you know. Uh, I mean, because me and you already have a bit of a problem already. You know. Oh, oh so, we do. Yeah, yeah. We we have a problem. I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm bothering me while I'm at work. What's your problem? Okay, well, my problem is this, is that, you know, after purchasing the property, I went downtown to the city and actually looked at, you know, the, the layout of this entire property. And when I look at it, you actually 25, close to 30 feet over the property line. Oh, no, you're looking at the wrong map. No, no. The fence that separates my backyard from your backyard, you are 30 feet over that. That's impossible. You know, no, no. Listen, and I know this. Now, let me, let me, I'm going to tell you how I, I, I look at You got a jacuzzi in your backyard, right? Oh, so you've been, you've been spying on me? No, I haven't been spying on you, sir. I'm just telling you. Cl close to that, not far from that fence line, don't, don't you have a jacuzzi there? Well, you, as a matter of fact, I do, yes. Okay. Now, the pool is, the pool is okay. But, but if I, if I push that fence line back 30 and actually get the property that I'm supposed to have, I pretty much own yo 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 jacuzzi, yo hot tub. I see. Okay. Let me tell you something. Uh, I've been in that house for 10 years. We put that fence up when we moved in, and it was based on the property line that was that was set when uh, 10 years ago. I don't know what you're looking at, but my fence is not moving. My jacuzzi's not moving, and there's there's no changing that. Okay. Well, let me let me let me. I'm glad you you, you voiced what you wanted to voice. Now 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 you hear you hear old Clifford out. Let me tell you something. Uh, Either we're going to take the fence line and move it where it's supposed to be, or we're going to put a gate between uh, uh, our two yards, and I'm going to be able to come and get in this jacuzzi and pool whenever I want to. All right, let's 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 talk about this. First of all, there's gonna, not going to be any gate, okay? And, and as far as you just coming over and getting in the jacuzzi at will, uh, i got a real problem with that. Uh, you've called me at work. Uh, I'm on the job, and I'm having to listen to this on a future neighbor uh, who, who's making weird claims about how he owns part of my land. I own the jacuzzi, sir. No, no, you did not pay for that jacuzzi. You did not pay for that fence. You just showed up making a, a you call me at work and, 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 and then hand me some story uh, with no evidence. I'll go down to City Hall and look at those papers myself because I don't trust you're saying. I've been there for 10 years. I've had 10 other neighbors in that backyard. Y'all cycle through once a year, I swear, and I've never had any problems with them until you come along. This is some Okay, well, I tell you what. Here's, here's something you need to understand. You got a new black neighbor, and you got a new black neighbor that owns part of, owns your jacuzzi because you're over the fence line. Alright, and as soon as I move in, I'm coming and I'm getting in my jacuzzi. The you will, man. You know what I mean? Just go. Move into that. I'm going to use the jacuzzi on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You get it on Tuesday, Thursday, and the weekend. That's it. Because part of this damn jacuzzi belongs to me. The jacuzzi is owned by a black man and a white man. And we're going to get along. Bottom line. Look here. Well, listen here, you. Who are you to dictate what days I get to use my jacuzzi? Because it's not coming over to my jacuzzi. It's not just your jacuzzi. 
power jacuzzi because you you built it. That's the only thing that makes it yours. It being on my part of the property helps make it mine. So therefore, we're gonna share this damn jacuzzi and we're gonna try to get your my jacuzzi. I'm tossing your across the fence. I will be there Mondays, Wednesdays, and you ain't gonna be. I will be standing at my jacuzzi with a shotgun. You take one step over to my property, my property line. I swear, if I could jump through this phone, I'd wring your neck. You know who's going to be in there with me? Who? Who the is going to be in there? I'm going to have Cunningham in the damn jacuzzi. Who? Cunningham. My co-worker? <laughs> what the? Hey, man, this is Nephew Tommy, man. Your, your, your boy Cunningham got me to prank phone call you. This, oh, that Oh, payback to we got you, man. We got you. You got me good. Hey, I got one more thing to ask you, man. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Radio Show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter for today. Subject, Woo. his family never has any money. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Uh, we're going to switch gears here now, and uh, it's time for the Strawberry Letter. If you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, his family never has any money. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm married to the sweetest man on earth, and he's very outgoing, and he loves to cook. Because of that, we never can have a quiet dinner at home. If he makes pasta, he has enough food to feed the multitude, and his family knows it, so they automatically drop by and fix a plate. My husband has styrofoam to-go plates just for his family. I complain about his family taking advantage of him, but he doesn't see it that way. I do sneaky little things like I'll ask his mother to bring a gallon of milk when she comes, but she always has an excuse not to do it. She'll say she wasn't dressed to run in the store or she forgot to shop. Same with his brother. He always shows up empty handed. Since the 4th of July is coming up, I told my husband to leave the planning up to me after he ordered a bouncy house for our backyard so all of his nieces and nephews can play. So I sent out eight individual emails to his sisters, his brother, his parents, and his godmother. I told them what to bring based on their income. I got eight emails back, and the first thing on each email was, did E ask you to send this to me? Then I got six different excuses about them not having any money. It's the 1st of June, and they're already claiming to be broke past the 4th of July. When my husband found out I sent the emails, he went off on me. He said I was dead wrong for asking his family to chip in, knowing they all have financial issues. I yelled back at him because I'm tired of him feeding and entertaining those broke grown folks with our money. Is his ego taking over and he's trying to impress his family? Why does he take care of them like this? Obviously, because he can, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to do it. He's been doing it for so long this way. It's a hard habit to break. I know this is frustrating to you as his wife. You're counting the money and all of that. Uh, you see them as using him and taking advantage of him, and they are, and it is. But uh, he wants to do this. He wants to cook for them and have them over. You said he was sweet and very outgoing, and he loves to cook. Uh, he enjoys cooking for his family. Remember, you said he was sweet and outgoing. Uh, I, I really think you should pick your battles. And uh, in this one, you're losing with your husband. You just are. This is the man you married. This outgoing guy who loves to cook and have family over. Um, you know, you want intimate time with your husband. I get that. Maybe you should schedule date nights 
if you want to be alone with him. Um, cooking big, big meals makes him happy. I mean, I just say don't ruin it for him. Yeah, your little email scam to his family backfired and, and they never bring anything when you ask them to. So you might have to let this one go. Your house is that house, the family house. Everybody comes over there to eat. He cooks a lot because he wants them to come over and dig in. Otherwise, all that food would go to waste. I mean, I don't think this is as big a problem as you seem to think it is. Steve? Lady, the subject is his family never has any money. Who in here on this show don't know that sentence? (laughs) Who out there in the listening audience don't know that sentence? Don't ever set to say his. You could just say they family never has any money. And you can and, and you can put the shoe on whatever f- foot it fit. Everybody been through that. Everybody know that. Come on now. Now you're married to the sweetest man on earth. He's very outgoing and he loves to cook. Okay, you just described who you're married to. That's who you have. He's yours. He is the sweetest man on earth. He's very outgoing and he loves to cook. Okay, ta-da, what's the rest of this letter for? (laughs) If you state that right up at the top, what is the rest of the letter for? Because all the rest of the letter is, is you countering who you already know this man is. Because of that, we can never have a quiet dinner at home. If he makes pasta, he has enough food, food to feed the multitudes, and his family knows it. So now, see, that, that's a biblical reference. You tried to go holy. <laughs> feed the multitudes. He got enough food to Fish feed the low. multitudes. Now, you, now you mad because he trying to be Jesus. <laughs> 5,000 hungry souls he fed. <laughs> Five fish, two loaves of bread. <laughs> That's what that reference is. My husband has styrofoam to go plates for his family. I complain about his family taking advantage of him, but he don't see it that way. You know why he don't see it that way? Because he's the sweetest man on earth. That's what you said. But now you mad because he's being the very reason you married him. He just didn't know he was married to the wicked witch of the West. <laughs> That's the problem. Hang on. He Steve. didn't know he had married Brunhilde. <laughs> Hang on. All Cinderella's right. uh, uh, Evil. funky uh, ass. The stepmother. <laughs> Wait, what we'll have part that? two of your response Step, coming up, Steve. Uh, the subject of today's Strawberry Letter is his family never has any money. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject is his family never has any money. They don't. They never have money. And he knows that. He grew up in this family. That's where he's from. You stated that you're married to the sweetest man on earth. He's outgoing and he loves to cook. So if that's the case, why did you write this letter? Because everything in this letter you wrote counters exactly what you say. We can never have a quiet dinner at home. If he make pasta, he got enough food to feed the multitudes. You try to be religious on us. <laughs> 5,000 hungry souls he fed, but that's what he do. He even has styrofoam to go plates for his family. I complain about his family taking advantage of him, but he don't see it that way. He don't see it that way because he is a kind and loving person, the sweetest man on earth. Then you say, I do sneaky little things like I'll ask his mother to bring a gallon of milk when she come, but she always got an excuse not to. She'll say she wasn't dressed to run to the store or forgot to stop. Same with his brother. He always show up empty handed. And since the 4th of July is husband, I told my husband to leave the planning up to me. <laughs> that was after he ordered a bouncy house so all his nephews and nieces could play in the backyard. That's who you married. The sweetest man on earth. But no. So you say, I tried to be sneaky. I sent out eight individual emails to his sisters and brothers, his parents and his godmother. I told him what to bring based on their income. I got eight mail emails back. And the first thing each mail, each email said was, did he ask you to send me this? <laughs> so see, you ain't as sneaky as you think. Uh-huh. 
I try to do sneaky little stuff. I sent out eight individual emails. Well, you ain't as sneaky as you think because I already know he didn't ask you to do this. Because you blocking. Then I got six different excuses about them not having any money. And your husband know this about this family. He grew up in this family. He knows how, how they are. This is the 1st of June, and they're already complaining about being broke past the 4th because they are already broke. These are broke people. They plan on being broke. They have no aspirations of plans of prospering. Who don't know people like that? He got a family full of them. Now, it's confusing to you and it's frustrating to you and you feel as though you're being taken advantage of. I got that. They all have financial issues. They always have and they always will. But he loves them. They are his folks. They have some redeeming qualities, but they ain't got no money. Now, if you start getting rid of family members because we ain't, they ain't got no money, we ain't going to have no family. Hmm. I wouldn't have no family. It was based on their income. So, no. I still love my family. I still help my family. I take care of my family. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm, you said, I'm tired of him feeding and entertaining those broke, grown folks. No, no, no. They are not broke, grown folks with our money. They are his family. Is his ego taking over and he's trying to impress his family? Why does he take care of him like that? I'm going to tell you exactly why. It is not his ego. It is his responsibility. And you know why it's his responsibility? Because he is the chosen one. He is the one in the family that made it. He is the one in the family that cut himself aside and distanced himself. How, do you know how many people out here listening to this letter knows what I'm talking about? You are the one in your family. You it. And you can quit tripping because you it. Now, you can be either a borrower or you can be the lender. Which one you want to be? Your husband is the lender. Now, would you prefer that you be married to the lender or the borrower? You can't complain about what all's on your plate when your whole goal was to eat. Y'all eat, and they eat because of you. I'm sorry. I'm the chosen one in my family. You happen to be the chosen one in your family. Tag you it. Sorry. You ain't like Butchie Neal. You it. <laughs> sorry. You ain't like Pookie Neal. You it. Sorry. You married into that family. They ain't like you. Sorry, but you're it. You're it. Quit complaining about being it because it is who you are. And I would rather be y'all than to be them. What you tripping for? You overlooking the blessing that you can feed them many people and still have money. You missing the blessing that you ain't them, that you get to be you. Y'all got money for a bouncy house to put in the backyard. What? They can't put a bouncy house back there. They barely got a mattress. <laughs> a bouncy house. Y'all better go out there and jump off them steps. That's what we did when we was little. We wanted to jump. We had to go up and jump off steps. We yeah. had no damn bouncy house. Onto the mattress. <laughs> Listen, y'all. Stop complaining because you the one. You are the one. Sorry. You are the responsible one. You are the one that separated yourself. You the first one to get a job at the post office. You the first one to go to college. You the first one that got a job as a supervisor. You the first one to open up a business. You the first one to become successful. You it. Sorry. Now normally doing strawberry letters, I take this time to make a fool out of these people. But this is a great moment for us and I'm talking to me. Shut up, Steve, complaining about being it because you are it. They'll be there on the 4th of July and they're all taking a plate home. 
<laughs> yeah, they're going right. to bust a bouncy house. Post yeah. your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Download it today. Cook, uh, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Junior, you and I had the opportunity, we had the privilege to visit and tour St. Jude Children's Hospital last month. It yes, was, we did, it was sure. great, we wasn't sure it? sure did. And, you know, we all know I have sickle cell disease. Yes. And I was told I wasn't going to even live to be 45 years old. So thinking of that, think about a parent who's just, who just found out their child has sickle cell disease and they won't live to see seven years old. Mm-hmm. Well, that happens. Uh, and, you know, St. Jude is finding cures and saving children with sickle cell disease. Hundreds of millions of people are, are of color are diagnosed with sickle cell trait. So what if your child or a child you know has a disease? By giving a gift of $19 to St. Jude, you help them uh, help more children. Give your monthly $19 gift by texting Steve Harvey Morning, by texting SHMS. That stands for Steve Harvey Morning Show, SHMS to 785-833. Families of St. Jude patients never receive a bill. They never have to worry about having insurance. The stress is lifted from them so they can just focus on the health of their child. St. Jude's mission is finding cures and saving children. Help St. Jude continue the mission with your $19 a month and you will receive a This Shirt Saves Lives free t-shirt. Show your support. Text SHMS. Yes, sir. Let me help you out with this because people are like me out there. They're not understanding this. When you go to text, that block that got T-O on it, to yeah. This is what you got to type That's in. 785 Because I didn't understand that text, too. Because mm-hmm. if I text to... <laughs> I just, I know their name and I go in that block. But no, uh, next to two, text two. 785-833. Then go down there in the block where you start to text it. Okay. And then type in SHMS, abbreviation for Steve Harvey Morning Show. Then press your send block. Then they're going to send you a link. Then you got a choice to send $19 a month. You can send $25 a month. You can send $50 a month. Or they got a block under there. If you can't afford that, you can send $2 a month. You can send $1 a month. You can send $100 a month. Type in whatever it is and make a monthly contribution. Or you can text it one time. Or you can do one time. I typed in the the amount with the the block over there and just sent the money. Because I started to understand after they've been on this show now, we're talking about a hospital that pays for everything. Yeah. Airplane, hotel, all medical bills. Your child got cancer and you don't get a bill for anything. Food, nothing while you're there. Nothing. No. That's amazing. And they are saving kids' lives. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what you need to do. I have $19 a month if it'll help save somebody's life. Let's help these kids, man. Mm -hmm. Do something. Now, I done gave. Now, you done, but Steve, you rich. Well, my ass ain't always been rich. But I, you got a damn dollar you can send to somebody. And quit telling me I'm rich. I know that. Hell, if one more person text me and tell me I'm rich, damn it, I know that. <laughs> all right. That's Thank but you, maybe if you gave to somebody, you God, the more you give, the more God That's give you right. to give. Maybe you'll be That's rich it. too then That's if you right. tighten up, loosen up your belt buckle a little bit with your stingy ass. Thank you for all your donations. Sorry, St. Jude's. Uh, coming kidding. up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, this is from Terry on Steve Harvey FM. Terry says, I've gotten wind of a birthday surprise that's being planned for me at work, and I want no part of it. First off, I hate surprises. Secondly, I stopped making a big deal about my birthday when I became an adult. Thirdly, when I'm done working, I want to go home or to hang out with my friends. The vast majority of my coworkers are not friends, and it all seems very fake to me. Now, if this party were to happen while I'm on the clock, I'm all for it. However, the buzz is that this will be happening after the workday is over. So that begs the question, how do I put a stop to it if I'm not supposed to know about it? 
Just don't go Carrie. to work. Well, well, first of all, you say you don't like surprises. Mm-hmm. That's over. You yeah. found out about it. It ain't a surprise. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, as an adult, you stop caring about your birthday as an adult. But sometimes, as an adult, guess what we have to do? We got to play the game. Yeah. We got to play the game. I do stuff all the time I don't want to do. <laughs> or I complain <laughs> about it when ain't nobody listening. But then, I know how to play the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I play the game. Just play along. You don't know. One of them people right there can help you with your next promotion down at the job. It's just a few hours. Sit down with them fake-ass people. You might discover that one of them fake-ass people is actually all right. They don't like them, though. Okay. They don't like them Mm -hmm. people. Okay. All right, so surprise. Play it off and enjoy the party. Is that what you're saying? For me? That, go oh, down man. there, enjoy the party, and sit yeah. down with them fake people. You might discover one of them fake people has been faking just like you and really enjoy it. Girl, play <laughs> it along with it. I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know stuff I don't want to do? <laughs> this is What's stuff I ain't want to do today. That you didn't want to do? You don't want to? You don't. Uh, mm. Don't ask. <laughs> don't don't want to know. Lie. So, don't have you ever man. done stuff with us? And you didn't want to do it? Yeah. Oh, We've been on vacations Carla. together, <laughs> parties, <laughs> really? everything. We first. Girl, eating, <laughs> dinner. <lunch>. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, who's going to pay for it? Yeah. Airlines. <laughs> who else hell is going to yeah. pay for it, oh, right? Yeah, <laughs> or Tommy. <laughs> oh, That's man. right. The only one paying for stuff is the fellas. Junior yeah. bought some. couple Kier, times. Kier does. Kier, Junior I takes know, care I of us well. Junior. You know what, Uncle? You know, hey, on that trip, stuff, on that trip to St. Jude, huh? On the trip to St. Jude, had to buy stuff then. <laughs> Did you? Thank you. Did we, what? We, yeah. Well, thank you, right? Yeah. Y'all got to feed them. I can't be out here, come back, tell they was hungry. Yeah, Uncle Steve Jr. didn't do nothing about it. Dying. Can't come in here with that one. Me. I'm Excuse me, Tommy, we can't hear you. Speak up. Y'all will be on a diet next time we go out. It ain't diet. Diet. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> All right. Thank and you. And the thing about the women Father's on this Day, show, by the way. they mm-hmm. expect it. That's <laughs> the problem. <laughs> We're appreciative, yeah, though. Can... We're very grateful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Thank you. you do all the time. Yeah. Thank you, guys. The problem be y'all, sure y'all to be honest. I'm sure. the problem. Because you, you, you are the hound. Sure, you is the problem. I don't even eat that much. How am I the problem? Because I expect it. Yeah, but it's what you be ordering. I know you don't be buying this stuff when you're on your own. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> you don't order, order no, t- no chicken cordon bleu. What the <laughs> hell is blue? <that? laughs> is it blue? Is it blue? All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after, right after this. So one time, Big dropped me off over there. And I told Big, come back by 1.30, pick me up so I can go home. Now, you know, and late at night, they, they really come out there. <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot it was about roses. So, yes. so <laughs> Big, this fool came to ring the doorbell. And they opened the door and Big walked in. I said, oh, man. And a roach fell off the ceiling oh. on on Big show. Oh, Lord. And Big sold it. And Big, Big knocked it off. He said, hey, man. <laughs> Was that a roach that just <laughs> fell on an Ian word? Ian, what's going on in here? And then he walked in and saw all these roaches. And he was just not, and he was just oh. killing roaches. He was just stomping. Just, man, look at, you ain't gonna believe, man, what the hell? Look, y'all, ain't nobody looking at these roaches, man. What is y'all doing? And he was just hollering. <laughs> man, you got to get out of here. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, this week, you know, we're going all out for St. Jude here on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Um, We hope that our audience will join us in giving and donating to St. Jude for such a worthy cause, just $19 a month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I mean, St. Jude's mission is finding cures and saving lives for children diagnosed with various types of cancer and sickle cell disease. And it's a lot of African and I didn't know that. in there. And that's really important. Yeah. People don't understand. St. Jude's is not about Saint race. Jude. It is not about your religion. It is about saving children's mm-hmm. lives with no cost to the parents. They fly these parents into these hospitals. They house them. They feed them. They take care of every medical bill. Your child go home cured and you don't have a medical bill. Now, who do that? This is mm-hmm. very, very different. 
And it's yeah. crazy, man. We have got to, we have got to support these people. Uh, listen to me, man. Uh, this St. This Jude's Hospital is worth it. You have got to make a donation. When we come back, I will tell you how to make the donation, who to text to, what to text. Matter of fact, let me do it right quick. All you got to do is text in the two block, 785-833, 785-833. Go down in the message and type in S. HMS. That's abbreviation for Steve Harvey Morning Show. Press the CN button and the rest of it's up to you. And help save children's lives. And oh, by the way, a Q designed the hospital. <laughs> oh, make a side fight right. strikes again. <laughs> Back after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather be the center of attention or just go unnoticed? Ooh. I don't know. I want to be the center of attention. Center of attention. We know you. Yeah. We know. Yeah. <laughs> we already know. Well, I'm Junior? Not. Yeah, we know. Long with Tommy. It's center of attention. Why, why do I walk around and nobody see me? What <laughs> the hell I'm here for? <laughs> Uneffective. <laughs> I want to be the center. That choice been going for me a long time. <laughs> yeah, you know, option. Yeah, when can you, know. you not be the center of attention? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're about to get married again. You want all your exes there, or you want your new bride's ex there at the oh, wedding? No, no I want all wedding. my exes there. Look what oh, you missed out on. It ain't you. <laughs> Watch <laughs> my glory. Matter of fact, they can walk me yeah. down the aisle. <laughs> get away Give you away? <laughs> Hell yeah. Because <laughs> me and your ex, we going to be thumping. Why is <laughs> your ass here? You going to fight at your and he, home and, 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 and he over there making a plate? Uh-huh. At the reception. My man. I'll kick you in your lower back so hard you knock that whole punch tray off. <laughs> the hell? All you right. ain't sitting over here Let's, there let's no stay punch. on this fighting thing for a moment. You're a gladiator in the ring. Imagine yourself a gladiator in the ring. Would you rather fight a lion or a rhinoceros? Rhinoceros or lion? I'm losing either way. Yeah. Oh, either way, you're dead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to fight that damn rhinoceros. Yeah, you might have really? a chance. Really? Yeah. You might have a chance. Why? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. try to tie that him up. Lion? You're not going to have a the chance. King? That lion? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, we're going to do something. I'm, I'm going to do something. Jump over the rhinoceros. Because they can't jump. Grab I'm that horn. I'm to do something, man. <laughs> Stay behind. I grab his tail and just hang on. So, <laughs> that line, you're going to get that your ass beast, with, with that line. As <laughs> soon as he roar, I'm sugar mm-hmm. honey iced tea all <laughs> over the lake. Uh-uh. <laughs> TMI. <laughs> all right. Would you rather be allergic to barbecue, barbecue ribs, or would you rather be allergic to pizza? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Those are two of the greatest things in life, right? Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which one? Which one? Barbecue or pizza? That pizza go hard, man. <sighs> so good. So You're good. allergic to everything: tomatoes, cheese, pepper. Yeah, I'd rather be allergic to fruit. <laughs> Pick something random. <laughs> I got the to have barbecue that pizza. and pizza. I got to have that pizza, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, so you rather real barbecue? Soul. Real. Mm-hmm. Some baby bags. Oh, baby bags. Junior. Oh, uh, I don't. Uh, pizza or barbecue? Which one? You know, I'm, 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 I'm black. That's I'm about the best one y'all have had right there. That's I'm gonna have one. to keep these ribs. I just know how I just love ribs. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Okay. Okay. Steve, you right, didn't say one. anything. He didn't say anything. Yeah, he can't. My father would come back from he the grave fruit. and disown me if I picked pizza. There's <laughs> no way. My, boy. So you got to go with the ribs. You got to go with the ribs. I've never seen my father eat a pizza pizza in, in his life. I've never seen him eat pizza. Really? Oh, wow. But you I love never. pizza so much. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, that's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up at 49 minutes after the hour. I think we found some more Father's Day gifts that you guys might like. We we're don't want to, them. We're trying to help you. Help us help you. <laughs> All right. Well, we ain't like nothing you done gave us so far. Right after Just this. Hope these work. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for our last break of the day. And we're going to close out the show with this, Steve, Tommy, Jr. 
Sunday is Father's Day. We know that. We had some gifts earlier that we picked. We thought you guys might like. You didn't like any of those. You said they were going to kill you. So how about these? (laughs) They were dangerous. Yeah. (laughs) And we weren't trying to do that. All right. Here we go. How about some waterproof Bluetooth speakers? Waterproof Bluetooth speakers. Now y'all are really going to electrocute us now. See, this is what I'm talking about. They're waterproof. What are you talking about? Mm-mm. I don't you put don't electricity in no water. I don't put no so electric now stuff in, my, in no water. Now I'm in my soaking tub with the speakers. So old. What I'm doing? <laughs> what you say, Junior? Now we in a soaking tub with speakers. Now what are we doing? <laughs> that's all the time being water. Not going out to the pool. Bro. Oh man, Steve, you've said nothing. You got to be careful when they start adding features to stuff that's already got a specialized feature. Uh-huh. You got a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. Now to make yeah. it waterproof. Yeah. Uh-huh. They got to cut costs somewhere. Uh, the Bluetooth speaker already don't sound worth a damn. <laughs> so what are you uh, saying? Okay. This so is he's not a gift no. you would use? They don't want we it. We don't want it. They don't want we it. Don't want I don't it. want no damn Bluetooth speaker. What is uh, it? Okay, what how about this? It? How about that? We're going to stay technical for a minute. How about you get a, a personalized phone charger and they could put dad on it. Lo- you know, love you dad. Dad's or charger. have what? Father's Day dad. Yeah. Nobody want no ragged ass phone charger. <laughs> you uh, who in here ain't got a phone charger? <laughs> who you don't have a in personalized here ain't got phone. a phone charger? Personalized? What difference do it make? It can say sure. Dad's charger, so you can yeah, say this is my so no charger. No one else can. Yeah, no I don't want it. y'all nowhere near my damn phone. Okay, let's just get this understood. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there's that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. How about They're a personal- gonna take the charger anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How about a personalized coffee cup with your name on it? Steve, hold up your coffee cup right now on the screen. Oh, All right, yeah, you like ATVs? We down the cups though. We down. The- <laughs> you guys, you don't want socks. You don't want a tie. You yeah, don't want underwear. Come cup. on, we're running out of options here. <laughs> you get you know? the mug for Father's Day with your name on it. <laughs> All right, Steve, Steve you you, you like riding it, ATVs? Right? You do. You like yeah. riding ATVs. How about a foldable bike helmet for bike riding? You see what I'm saying? Uh, what? It's a, your, a foldable, foldable bike helmet. <laughs> yeah. It folds. You finna kill yourself. <laughs> no, I didn't so as you fall with that helmet on, guess what it's going to do? It's going to fold with your damn head in it. <laughs> I didn't right. want no foldable bunk. What? Oh my God. Guys, I get this stuff please, from. There's no pleasing you. A what do we need gr- to fold for? So you because can take it so with you, you can, wherever you go. When yeah. you get off, you can take it places and put it, you know. So you have to wear it. Hey, hey, you can't take that ATV everywhere you go. What the hell is you carrying the helmet for? <laughs> but if you go somewhere, let's say you're on vacation and you rent an ATV <laughs> right. or bike, you oh, got right. your helmet with you, your that's own helmet. Do. Oh, that ain't going to save you no fold up helmet. Oh God! You I don't want pleasing anything. you guys. Y'all, how about, y'all, how y'all, about, how about no. some night? You like shoes, right? How about y'all some comfortable leather sandals? Nice. I like for the summertime. No you like your feet out? Cheap ass sandals. I need some sandals from <laughs> Dick Sporting Good. I'm gonna fit that all ass sandals. sandals they gonna get Dick Sporting. Those are nice. Good. You don't wow. want nice size double XL. Don't nobody want that. <laughs> Sliding off that hot ass rubber, feet be sweating and toes be open and heel be out, feet still be sweating. That hot ass cheap rubber. How about how about a robotic woman that don't complain? How about one of them? You Where you gonna get that at? Yeah, and oh. well, that's a gift. Well, yeah, fine. that's not happening. Back to the list, okay. Shirley. <laughs> how about a nice fluffy bathrobe? Nice. Bath- there you go. A nice one. Steve ain't gonna use that. He don't bathe. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I need a robe for where I'm going. I'm dry off. I'm out of here. <laughs> Just to chill around the house. You don't want that. <laughs> and then in a week later, you gonna have it on. See those. All ones? right. <laughs> to, to, you guys, we're gonna. To, today was all about. St. Jude's anyway, okay? We're trying to help you guys for Father's Day, but this week we're going all out for St. Jude here on the Steve Harvey Morning Show, yeah. okay? <laughs> Since we can't please you I guys like for that Father's part. Day. Shirley, I got it. Shirley, I got it. All right. Okay. Come on, Listen Dad. Me. You're doing your thing. Come on. Dad. We can save kids' lives yes. with a hospital that's dedicated to that. 
Mm-hmm. They date. They, they take care of all types of children. They don't care about your race. They don't care about your faith. They don't care no, nothing about your economic stature. You can be the poorest of poor, or you can have money. If you bring your child to them, and your child is sick, they will cover all the cost. They are in the life saving business. They are in the curing and healing business. St. Jude's Hospital is worth an investment of any kind that you can afford to do. All you got to do is go to your text. Act like you finna text somebody. On the line that says two, I want you to type in 785 785-833. Then I want you to go down to the block where you start texting the message you want and type in these four letters. S-H-M-S. S-H-M-S. That is abbreviation for Steve Harvey Morning Show. The Impressed Sin. They will send you a link. Press the link right there and it will open up and you can pay Apple Pay. You can pay any kind of way you want to. You can make a one-time monthly installment. You can pay monthly or you can pay one time. You can pay any amount. They got a block for 19. They got a block for 25. They got a block for 50. And they got a block if you can't afford none of that. If you want to give $5, $10, type that in and pay Apple Pay or any way you want to pay it and send that money. And you can change some kids' lives, man. We can save kids' lives. I didn't know how effective they were till I started watching these commercials and watching these links. These people in the life-saving business, I'm now a monthly subscriber. I give monthly right now. Give what you can afford to give to St. Jude's Hospital for Children. Thank you. That's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Talk to God today. He'd love to hear from you. And give some money, whatever you can afford. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 